U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump unveils his plan to defeat ISIS as more questions are raised about his campaign manager's business dealings. A day for celebration in Nigeria turns into disappointment as polio makes a comeback. And the first South American Olympic Games showcases host city Rio's culture. Africa 54 starts right now. Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. Now we'll have those stories in a moment. But first, we begin with a tragic mistake made in Yemen. A Saudi-led coalition airstrike hit a hospital in Yemen's northern Hajj province Monday, killing more than a dozen people and wounding at least 20 others. The hospital is run by the International Humanitarian Organization, Doctors Without Borders. The hospital's director, Ibrahim Aram, says 15 people were killed, including three foreign physicians. Aram says three other medical personnel were among the wounded and that three other staffers had limbs amputated. The coalition airstrike came just two days after similar Saudi airstrikes hit a residential area near the Saudi border, killing at least 19 people, most of them children, in a school. Uh, the non-government organization has denounced the attack on the hospital full of patients. It says the bombing in Haja was the fourth such attack against an MSA facility in the past 12 months. Now, turning to East Africa, speaking at Monday's inauguration of the Transitional National Legislative Assembly, South Sudanese President Salva Kiir called on legislators to work together in a spirit of tolerance and cooperation. Mr. Kiir stressed that the government has not announced its objection to a resolution adopted by the UN Security Council for the deployment of a 4,000 strong protection force in Juba. Kier also says an investigation will be launched into the circumstances that led to the outbreak of violence in Juba last month. President Kier said a commission of inquiry will be tasked with investigations. Kier reiterated that cooperation is the key to peace as he addressed several pressing issues. You will not achieve what the people of South Sudan expect of you if you do not work together and support its new leadership. Therefore, I call upon you all, honorable members, to tolerate each other and cooperate amongst yourselves so that you do what is expected of you in the coming months. There have been allegations and reports of various cases of sexual, sexual assault. This is a very serious matter. I would like to unequivocally stress that we still show zero tolerance. We will, we will show zero tolerance towards such incidents. We have already begun an initial investigation, and we are reviewing medical reports and intend to prosecute those who will be found involved in this crime. Well, President Kier says he understands this concerns regarding the safety and the well-being of NGO staffers, aid and medical agencies and displaced South Sudanese in camps, adding that he had instructed all ministers in the security sector and the interior ministry to create a safe environment across the country. Now, talks to secure a lasting ceasefire in Sudan's three warring regions under a roadmap for peace have collapsed in less than a week after they began. Rebels have been fighting the Sudanese army in the southern regions of Kordofan and Blue Nile since 2011. When South Sudan declared independence in the west, the conflict in Darfur began in 2003 when mainly non-Arab tribes took up arms against the Arab-led government based in the capital Khartoum. Last week, rebel and opposition groups agreed to a roadmap for ceasefire talks and political reconciliation brokered by the African Union and already accepted by the government, the first such agreement since the fighting began in the south of Sudan. Ceasefire talks began immediately after. Now for more on the Sudan peace effort, uh, Suleiman Akwa Minawi, leader of the opposition group Sudanese Liberation Army, joins me by phone from Kampala, Uganda. Good evening, Mr. Minawi. 
Yes, uh, actually, I am many are coming now. Yes, uh, traditionally, I'm calling, not calling me. Sorry, People call you Mini Minawi. I, I know that is your, your, your how well you know, how, how mostly you know, Mr. Mini Minawi. Now there has been a blame game here. The government uh, uh, lead negotiator blames you, the opposition, for the collapse of these talks. You guys collapse, uh, uh, blame them. How about we just do away with the blame game? What are the real sticking points in this uh, peace process that have made it difficult for you to continue? Just one week after they began. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, also I would like to thank my extend my thanks to the all listeners of the VOA News. Uh, yes, true, we had uh, signed a roadmap after uh, after the difficulties that have been happening uh, from the March up to August. When we signed that roadmap, it was a signal positive, a signal and very positive signal that we sent it to all our people and the international community, uh, including the United States government has played a very good role in order to organize that meeting, including the, the mediator. But immediately after we entered to the, to the practical issues, which is the cessation of facilities and the humanitarian uh, Solutions that to open the gate to the political and wider political negotiations. Unfortunately, the government gets uh, stand on its own shelter or its own trench that is not going, not ready to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to offer any now, concessions. Now, that we, we, we already we did as the movement. Now, listen, that that, is why Mr. Minawi, they. They also say you kind of are insisting on certain things you didn't agree. This is supposed to be negotiations, talks. Are there chances that you'll go back to the table and actually, talk about these things? Actually, that allegation was not true because we, as the parties, uh, as the movement, uh, when we sit, uh, when we had the meeting with the mediation the day before yesterday, we give up and also we give the concessions all more than the 17 points. The rest of the, all the points, it were only three points. We just give it to the government. The, the priority we give it to the government has to, to, to accept our, our proposal that we want to establish the humanitarian unit, which is contained and which is uh, the form from the all parties, including the UN and all the organizations there. Uh, this is rejected by the government. This was the main issue that collapsed all this, uh, uh, all this process. And that is why government was not ready to, uh, to coordinate and not ready to cooperate with the mm -hmm. other parties, uh, which is they call us to okay. incorporate with their standing, so, all standing Ms. in institution, which is... Okay, Mr. Minow. Mr. Mino, we'll follow up to see if uh, there will be some success in the coming days. Thank you very much for joining us today. And that is uh, Mr. Suleiman Minawi, best known as Mini Minawi, is the leader of Sudanese Liberation Army, SLA. Well, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump outlined his policy for fighting terrorism during a campaign stop Monday in Ohio. Trump claims his Democratic rival Hillary Clinton would be unable to prevent terrorist attacks or defeat Islamic State militants in the Middle East. Meanwhile, Clinton campaigned in Pennsylvania with Vice President Joe Biden, who praised high experience. VOA's Zlatica Hoek reports. Speaking in Youngstown, Ohio, Trump again blamed President Barack Obama and his former Secretary of State Clinton for the rise of Islamic State and said he would defeat the militants. We will partner with King Abdullah of Jordan and the President of Egypt, President Sisi, and all others who recognize this ideology of death that must be extinguished. We will also work very closely with NATO on this new mission. Trump made no reference to the New York Times report suggesting that his campaign manager, Paul Manafort, may have made lucrative deals with the Ukrainian party with close ties to Russia. Manafort denied receiving any payments from the party, but his past business links with Russia are now under tight scrutiny. 
the Republican Party launched its first election campaign in Israel on Monday to try to convince some 300,000 American Israeli dual citizens to vote for Trump. They don't know, they don't even remember that they can vote, and this one, this time we're going to convince them that they have to go out and vote because their number one issue, their only issue, is who will be better president to the Israeli government. Some of these dual citizens are from the battleground state of Pennsylvania, where Clinton campaigned on Monday. I know some of you may have friends up here in northeastern Pennsylvania who are thinking about voting for Trump, you know. I know, I know. Friends should not let friends vote for Trump. Vice President Joe Biden was with Clinton at a rally in Scranton. Trump's ideas are not only profoundly wrong, they're very dangerous and they're very un-American. You know, they reveal a profound ignorance of our Constitution. It's a recipe for playing in the hands of terrorists and their propaganda. An average of recent national polls indicates that Clinton has a lead of nearly seven percentage points over Trump. Slatica Hoke, VOA News, Washington. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Share the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCory. Coming up, global war against polio suffers a setback in Nigeria. Stay with us. I am Sheka Sali, host and senior editor of VOA's international calling talk show, Straight Talk Africa. Today we'll examine the tobacco industry. We we'll pretty much touch on anything that you can think of. Politics, health issues, human rights issues, you name it, we talk about it. The issues that we discuss are pertinent to most people on the African continent. A very, very rare and unique opportunity to interact with their leaders. Well, it's time for our health report, and joining us now is Africa 54 Health correspondent Lino Mudu with an update on Zika. That's right, Vincent. The Zika virus has been found in the semen of an Italian man six months after his first symptoms, twice as long as in previously reported cases. Doctors at the Spallanzani Institute for Infectious Diseases in Rome say it pointed to the possibility that the virus was reproducing itself in the male genital tract. Current guidelines recommend infected patients should use condoms or abstain from sex for at least six months after the onset of symptoms. The doctors say in light of this new evidence, an extension of this recommendation might be advised, as well as the continued testing of semen after six months. Zika is spread by mosquitoes and is suspected of leading to babies being born with underdeveloped brains. Africa was set to celebrate its two-year anniversary of being polio-free when the Nigerian government reported that two children have been paralyzed by the disease. The country is launching a massive polio vaccination program, which began on Monday. VOA's Carol Pearson reports on the challenges Nigeria and other countries face in getting to zero cases of polio. The polio virus struck Nigeria again. It's the last country in Africa where this crippling virus exists. Now in the north, two children are paralyzed for life. The north is where Boko Haram militants have made vaccination campaigns dangerous. Dr. Mohamed Ali Pate helped establish trust with tribal leaders. He continues to work to end polio in his home country. That trust, we have maintained it. Shigiri Foundation, uh, with support from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, is continuing to work on community engagement through the Northern Traditional Leaders Committee on Primary Health Care and Polio Eradication. And that will continue. Nigeria's partners in polio eradication have redoubled their support to help Nigeria end polio. From the Centers for Disease Control, John Vertefe spoke by Skype. The changes that have been made over the uh, last couple of years um, in the polio program in Nigeria uh, resulted in a very professional operation that is able to deliver this response. While Nigeria has experienced a setback, the world is very close to eradicating polio. Only 23 cases have been reported so far in 2016. At one time, 
Polio would kill or cripple half a million people a year. Only two other countries are reporting polio, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Pate says the effort to end polio exemplifies what a global partnership can actually accomplish. Carol Pearson, VOA News, Washington. Joining us live via Skype from Geneva, Switzerland, is Oliver Christian Rosenbauer, spokesperson for polio eradication with the World Health Org Organization. Mr. Rosenbauer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So as Africa was one year away from being uh, polio-free, declared by the WHO, we have to reset the clock back and wait another three years, right? Yes, to be officially certified polio-free as a, as a continent, you need to have three years without any, any polio cases. And confirmation last week uh, the, of, of, of two children being paralyzed by this disease again uh, is tragic. Uh, but what we're, what we're dealing with is really the last remaining reservoir of this crippling virus. If you look back 20 years ago in 1996, Nelson Mandela launched a massive uh, continental campaign called Kick Polio Out of Africa. At that time, every single year, 75,000 children were paralyzed by this disease in every African country. And now we've got it cornered, thanks to the leadership and engagement of, of African leaders right across the continent, to one relatively geographically limited reservoir where the virus still exists. And the key will now be to knock it out there as rapidly as possible. So as, uh, while Africa has to wait uh, three more years for being certified polio-free, hopefully this will happen, what does this mean for the global fight against polio? Well, I think for the global fight, it, it, it really shows two things. Number one is uh, it, it's not easy to eradicate a disease from the world. It's only been done one time before with, with smallpox in the 1970s. Uh, this is a virus that, that, that hides in places and then suddenly pops up again. The other thing that it, 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 we need to learn from it is we really need to double our determination because every single child that is now paralyzed by polio must be a reminder to us and the world this is an unnecessary paralysis. So we have a vaccine available that protects children and every, every child anywhere has a right to be vaccinated and protected from this, uh, from, from this terrible disease. And that, that is the goal. We've got it down the virus to the lowest levels we've ever had it. Uh, we haven't seen polio at all in anywhere in Africa for more than two years. Uh, it's tremendous progress. We now have one small reservoir remaining. Uh, and uh, the authorities in, in, in Nigeria, as well as in neighboring countries, in Chad, in northern Cameroon, in, in southern Niger, uh, are taking this extremely seriously and are launching a massive regional immunization outbreak response uh, because of all the population movements across the, 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 the Lake Chad subregion uh, with the aim of exactly that, to vaccinate every single child. And quickly, Oliver, what needs to be scaled up in this uh, immunization campaign? I think the full engagement of all communities, uh, that will be the key uh, to no matter where children live, uh, whether they live in, in, in fully accessible areas, in some areas of, of the region you have some conflict, uh, safe passage of vaccination teams must be assured, uh, uh, no matter where a child lives. Uh, they, they, they have the right to be protected, and that will be the key now. Okay, Oliver Rosenbauer, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And that was Oliver Christian Rosenbauer, his spokesperson for polio eradication with the World Health Organization. And that's our health report for today. To stay in touch for more, find me on Twitter at Lenore Mudu. Back to you, Vincent. Well, Lenore, thank you very much, and be sure to watch Lenore Mudu's health updates every Tuesday and Thursday right here on Africa 54. Now, the Fab Lab movement continues to sweep Africa. These digital workshops have been opening across the continent, including one in Ivory Coast for young children called the Barbie Lab. Kids there are learning to use open source software and build new electronic devices from e-waste. Emily Eob reports from Abidjan. Some of these children are just 10 years old, but they are already learning the ABCs of digital animation. This is the Babi Lab, a play on words with Babi, Abidjan's nickname. The lab aims to bridge the digital divide in one of the city's poorest neighborhoods, Ababo. The lab was created two years ago by a few IT engineers who also volunteered to teach. 
Digital technology is still reserved for the elite. We think it belongs to everyone. It is something everyone should master, especially coding, which is the language of the 21st century. Similar fab labs, or fabrication laboratories, have opened up across the continent, including in nearby Burkina Faso, Togo, Mali and Senegal. The Babi Lab received donations from a French bank and the French government to buy computers, but it remains mostly self-funded. The philosophy of the lab is circular economy. Nothing is wasted, everything can be transformed. Today I am dismantling these hard drives, which are broken and cannot be repaired, to make clocks. The clocks will then be sold to help finance the Babi Lab. Computer frames turn into furniture, keyboard keys turn into bracelets, or jerry cans turn into low-cost computers, the Baby Lab wants to inspire children to think out of the box and work together. When 12 years old, Awa Traoré walked into the lab last year, she had little knowledge of electronics. She has no computer at home. Now, she assembles this electric car in just a few minutes. I learned to create my own website using HTML. I learned electronic music. I want to be an IT engineer and teach children electronic music everywhere in the world. Gecko says the next step is to create a regional platform so they can collaborate with the other French-speaking fab labs. Emilie Yob for VOA News in Abidjan. Well, it's time now for a short break. Still to come on Africa 54, there is more to Rio than the Olympics. A closer look at the city's sights and sounds. We'll be right back. If you've just joined us, I'm Mariam Diallo, and here is a quick recap of today's headlines. In Nigeria, preferential currency exchange rate given to hash pilgrims even as the value of the Naira falls dramatically against the dollar. In Gabon, opposition parties support opposition leader Jean Ping challenging President Ali Bongo during the August 27th presidential elections. In Mozambique, residents at Tingang Hamen create a water reservoir in the hopes of storing water during the rainy season on the hill of a prolonged drought. In South Sudan, President Salva Kiir considers strengthening the UN force after it faced criticism for failing to protect civilians in Juba. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to Africa 54. Now here's what's trending. A team of Israeli Air Force veterans have developed augmented reality ski goggles meant to enhance the experience of zipping down the slopes. Uh, the developers tapped into their years of experience creating augmented reality visors for fighter pilots along with their passion for outdoor sports. The technology could ultimately be embedded in other types of eyewear for various outdoor sports. A simple eye or head movement clicks on the icons displayed on the lenses. It can work both online, connected through a cellular phone or offline. Now next up, uh, Pakistan's biggest port city of Karachi is widely considered to be unsafe, not just for tourists, but for locals too. Attempting to dispel that perception is the Super Safari Express, uh, claimed to be Karachi's first and only guided bus tour. The unique excursion guides locals and foreign visitors to the mega cities supposedly off-limits areas. The tour guides visitors not only to colonial-era Karachi monuments and landmarks, but also to elements of everyday city life. This trip uh, also includes visits to Karachi's new additions like the street art. Well, and finally, attention, fried food lovers and sweet treat fans. That distinctly all-American state fair staple, the deep-fried Twinkie, is now yours to buy at the grocery store. Hostess is launching the des uh, dessert as a prepackaged frozen good. A regular Twinkie is uh, doused in cake funnel, butter and oil, frozen and shipped to stores. To eat, you can either bake them in a traditional oven or pop them in a toaster oven or your own deep fryer. They run about 220 calories each, which frankly isn't half as bad as expected. 
and that is what is trending today. Now, uh, the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympics is the first Olympics hosted on the South American continent, a part of the world rich with cultural heritage. With that in mind, Jeff Swaiko takes us from the beaches to the nightlife of Rio to give you a taste of what this diverse city has to offer the Olympics visitor. What is there to do in between sporting events in Rio de Janeiro? A lot. You are in one of the most exotic cities in the world. First, you can head out to world-famous Copacabana Beach for a stroll along the surf and the incredible view. Or kick a soccer ball around with friends. The more adventurous can jump into a pickup volleyball game on the sand. Hungry? You can always have lunch in one of the many cafes along the promenade and soak in some live entertainment. Of course, there is always shopping on the beach. The salesmen come to you. Vince Corten and his family are from Belgium. They were here during the World Cup two years ago and were so impressed they decided to come back for the Olympics. Rio is a fantastic city. Of course, we have the Olympics, but you have fantastic bars, restaurants, music, uh, meeting people, and uh, for the time being, so international, so we love it. At night is when Rio de Janeiro really comes alive. For the nightlife, you head to Lapa, the old Portuguese quarter of town full of bars and music venues of all kinds. The 18th century aqueduct, one of the city's landmarks, was built to carry water from the Carioca River to Santa Teresa in the hills. Today, it is a cable car bridge. Tonight, the party spills out into the streets as fans watch a soccer match. Nick Brown is a Brazilian-American from Miami. You know, everyone's just so happy and so cheerful and seeing people from all over the world, you know, like uniting and being friends and partying together and just, you know, exploring everything and, you know, everything. <laughs> After the match, a night on the town would not be complete without a taste of authentic Brazilian samba. And for that, you head to Carioca de Gema, where the music is hot and the crowd is hotter. Whatever your tastes or desires, the Rio Olympics has a lot more to offer than sports on the court, pitch, and in the pool. Just Swicord, VOA News, Rio de Janeiro. Well, that's our show for today. Be sure to watch Africa 54 on our website at voaafrica.com. For more news, tune in to VOA's evening radio show, African News Tonight at 1800 UTC and in the mornings. Today, break Africa between 0300 and 0600 UTC, Monday through Friday. Thanks a lot for watching. From all of us in Washington, have a good night. Welcome to the Voice of America's News Words. You might have heard this word in a story about the trouble in Crimea. Referendum. Russian-backed troops have occupied Ukraine's Crimea region, and the local parliament voted Thursday to split from Ukraine and join Russia. It scheduled a referendum for later this month. A referendum is something that is voted on in a special election. It can decide big issues, like breaking away from one country to join another. A referendum can also be about something smaller, like a vote on a new law or policy for a city, state, or country. Now, when you hear the word referendum, you will know what it means.